This conference will now be recorded. Okay, someone else did it. All right. I don't know what's going on. All right. Good evening, everybody. Today is September the 30th, even though this is the first meeting in October. We're fooling you because it isn't till tomorrow. Um, as some of you have been around a while do know, when we have certain months, and it's really dependent on what day the first day of the month falls, we can get meetings on successive days. So the first Monday can follow the second or the second Tuesday can follow the first Monday as it does this month. And since we don't want to have two meetings on successive nights and we want to spread them, what we've done this month is we put the first Monday's meeting tonight and the third Monday's meeting on the 14th. And that also works out well for low intermediate. We thank them for accommodating us. Otherwise, they wouldn't have gotten the meeting until the middle of the month. It's, it's a very weird month. It fools a lot of people, including Jeff Marchi, who couldn't figure out why we were doing this because there weren't enough five, day, five days in the month. But when you look at the calendar, that's how it comes out. So we're here tonight um, and we'll be here on the, again on the 14th. And I'm working on something for the last week of the month, but I don't have a confirmation yet. Um, thank you to our sponsors, uh, Bayer, Novartis, Johnson & Johnson, Myriad, Telix and Blue Earth. And um, without them, we would not be able to make this possible. Just in case you're wondering, um, last year we got about 60% of our funding from our sponsors and the other 40% came from individuals. And with individuals, we only, we only go out once a year, unlike those people who can afford those fancy communications managers, um, <laughs> we only ask for money around Christmas time at the end of the year. Um, now, that's not to say that some of you are really generous. Some We have a bunch of sustaining donors here um, who donate every month, and we have other people who just are kind enough to send in donations during the year. So we do pick up money during the year, but we don't push for it. And as you know, um, we, we, we don't ask. The only time we'll ask for money is if you want one-on-one -on -one navigation. And the reason we do that is because we want to be sure you respect the, pet, the, the navigator's time because we're not set up to provide that type of navigation, notwithstanding there's a lot of guys in here who give a lot of very valuable volunteer time to help other other men. Um, I personally, it's harder for me because I I've got a day job, which is much like my night job, but it's running the whole show. So 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 that's that that's how it goes, and that's what is all on my part. It's all volunteer. Um, we will start with Took only because Took and I have had some correspondence and along with Mark Perlow during the week. And so I did say to him, come on into this group because um, I know that he's T3C. Um, and Took, I'm going to ask you a bunch of questions and um, and then we'll, we'll uh, open it up for people to talk to. So um, how old are you, Took? How old are you, Took? I'm, uh, I'm 55. 55. And um, where do you live? Uh, I'm in Pasadena, California. OK. I know it well. And what year were you, um, when were you first diagnosed? Uh, this year, beginning, or uh, about around summertime this year. Okay. Um, and what was your Gleason score uh, when you were diagnosed? 
Uh, uh, it was four plus three in um, uh, in three regions on my left side. How many cores did they take all together? Uh, uh, 12 uh, systematic cores and three on the tumor. Okay, and how many were positive? Uh, uh, let me see. Uh, I, uh, I think basically all my left side prostate. And on, on the right side, it was uh, 3 plus 3 for the uh, right base. So how many positive cores in total out of the 12? Oh, okay. Sorry. Uh, one, two, three, Nine, I guess. Two, four, uh, uh, eight. Eight. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I'm counting up. It, it's it, it's eight. And and um, has that biopsy been reread by anybody? Have you sent it out? Uh, no. No. Okay. Um, what was your well, PSA? Actually, well, it, it says, uh, according to my pathology report, it was uh, concurrently uh, read by another staff pathologist. So, okay, but it hasn't been read by another institution. No, no, it hasn't. Okay, we'll come back to that. Um, what was your PSA? Uh, it was a 6.2. And wh what, um, who was it that diagnosed you? Um, what type of doctor? And was it part of a hospital? Uh, yeah, it was part of HMO, uh, Kaiser. Um, it, I think you would, uh, originally, um, uh, let's see what, what happened here. Um, well, my my PSA kept rising, uh, so my uh, urologist ordered an, an MRI, and then that's when the MRI came. Uh, uh, they 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 noticed a semi vesicular invasion. Then I also and on the pathology and uh, extra capular extension. Okay. And so uh, so then uh, I had my biopsy. And then I noticed on my biopsy, it also it also referenced uh, perineal invasion is identified. So I guess okay. the cancer cell spread to to a nerve. From what I from my well, um, perineal invasion is very controversial, but let me say that isn't what should be concerning you, and we can explain it other times. But the the, 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 the bigger concern is the seminal vesicle invasion. Um, has Kaiser offered you a PSMA scan? Uh, yes, I did get a PSMA PET scan uh, using uh, Galilium 68 tracer. And, right. Uh, they didn't find any m metastasis at all. Okay, that's great. That's great. Um, and so what treatment have they offered you? Uh, well, I, well, first I decided I wanted uh, I, I I didn't want a radical prostatectomy, so I went with radiation, and then initially I wanted uh, SBRT since it was going to be quick, and then as I uh, as I attended the PCI conference and then, and then this group and then other resources, um, I, I I decided maybe SBRT would create a uh, long term more long term GU and GI uh, side effects. So I changed, so I changed my mind. I told the radiation oncologist I wanted uh, IMRT, and so, um, and then it seems like every time I message some, every time I message the radian oncologist, I seem to ask more questions because I've gained more inform, more knowledge, and now he seems to be irritated that I'm asking yeah, well, for a uh, for then, LDR bracket the uh, bracket then you tell him therapy boost. Right, and then you tell him you'll you'll go you'll you'll seek another on, uh, radiation oncologist if he's irritated because 
he has no reason to be irritated. It, it is standard of care for somebody with T3C and it should have been offered to you in the first place and it should have been explained to you in the first place. Now, how do I know that? Because I happen to be a T3A um, prostate cancer survivor who was treated at Kaiser Permanente. And in 2007, I was offered seeds plus IMRT plus hormone therapy. And if there's been any change since then, it has been to substitute the brachytherapy, which is either low dose or high dose, it depends on how much volume you have, with SBRT, which is less invasive. So Dr. Roach, who you heard at PCRI, his protocol is two sessions of SBRT to the gland, and then somewhere between 20 and 25 sessions of IMRT. Oh, oh, oh really? Oh, okay. Okay, now I... I, I, I oh, sorry. Uh, well, I think right now um, I have my CT planning sessions already scheduled for tomorrow. So I think I'm gonna just uh, stick with IMRT and then hope for a breaky there, a breaky boost after afterwards, because I, because I want to max out on my out of, on, on my, on my out of pocket expenses uh, cost this, 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 this year. So okay. I'm trying to squeeze so, everything in at, at uh, once. Let, let me just say a couple of, uh, I'll say a couple of things on this and, uh, you know, we can probably throw it open. Let me just ask you a couple of other questions. Did they do any genetic testing on you? Have you had a germline test to see if you have any inherited cancer? Um, I'm, I'm, uh, they scheduled an appointment for me this week, but I did, I, I, I did read, uh, I did look at one of your prior recordings and saw your message that, that about the promise study so yep. i did uh so i did sign up for the promise study and i turned in my color uh swab to them good job so yeah so it'll probably be eight eight weeks before i get my results uh hopefully i don't have a bracket two gene right education <laughs> well good job good job from picking it up um <clears throat> the um there's a couple of things i think you if it were me, I would definitely want to get my treatment sorted um, up front. So if they are going to go forward with IMRT, which is fine. I had my IMRT before I had my seeds. Um, you can do it either way around. Have you, have they given any, have you, have they put you on hormone therapy yet or not? Uh, yes, I am on ADT. I got my six-month Lupron shot. And, okay. uh, you don't want a six-month Lupron shot again, okay? The problem with the oh, problem oh, oh. with the six-month Lupron shot is that we've seen guys where it wears off in the fifth and the sixth month. It's just not consistent. You're better off getting three month shot, two, three month shots, or a four month shot, then another four month shot. But we at ANCAN don't like that six month shot, six month shot because it's not reliable at the back end of the shot. Oh, oh I see. Okay. Okay. Uh, I'm hoping to maybe switch over to Orgovix uh, after six months because I read that uh, the loop line yeah, takes a year and a half to recover your 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 testosterone levels. And well, there's a, a couple of things. The first is that that uh, I don't think you're going to have much luck switching over to Orgovix at Kaiser. I hate to tell you, but don't set your sights on that. Secondly, did they give you bicalutamide? I think you told me they did give you bicalutamide before the Lupron. Is that right? Uh, uh, yes. Yeah, I was on Casadex. Oh, yeah, bicalutamide. Right. Okay, that's good. Um, how long have they told you you need to stay on the hormone therapy? Uh, my urologist well, uh, said 18 months, but then the nurse practitioner who uh, administered the the, my, the shot said 
uh, now they're thinking only six months. Uh, and well, they said intermittent, so uh, it might be reevaluated. Okay. Uh, so after six months. another lesson. Don't listen to nurse practitioners <laughs> anywhere because they don't know half the time what they're talking about. The protocol for you is 18 to 30 months, depending on who it is. So your urologist is spot on and your nurse practitioner doesn't really know what they're talking about because they probably don't even understand what T3C is. Oh, okay. Right. So if you can, you know, it's fine if they want to give you the shot, but you tell them, I don't want to discuss medicine with you. I'll talk to my urologist. That's that's what I've done. That's what I do. I had to do it this week when somebody tried to schedule an appointment with a nurse practitioner and they were offended. So what did I do? I picked up my records and went to another doctor. And that's what you got to do. Uh, I'm afraid my uh, ED will be permanent because my testosterone won't recover if, if, if I'm on 18 months of uh, Well, the, the, that gets us into a bunch of other issues. But I'm sure you'd rather be on the right side of the grass than worry about your ED. And so the, the first thing that you got to do is make sure you're getting the right treatment. All right. Okay. And the right treatment is at least 18 months. I did 28 months with low dose brachytherapy and IMRT. I think I had 20, I can't even remember now, 22 sessions. That was in 2007. And I have a durable continuing remission. And that's what we want you to have. Your cancer is worse than mine. I didn't have seminal vesicle invasion. Seminal and vesicle invasion is very tricky. And you don't even think about skimping on your hormone therapy. Okay. Oh, what's okay. your opinion with the, with the ADT causing uh, cardiovascular disease? Okay, so first of all, and I got a LP little a test, and it's high. So, so I'm I'm worried that um, you know about C C V D. Okay, so does it? We'll 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 return to that in a second. First of all, you got to make sure that Kaiser is committed to give you either SBRT or brachytherapy after your IMRT. Okay. Are they committed? Uh, yes. Yeah, I've got an appointment with a uh, with a uh, brachytherapy specialist um, uh, after I start my uh, IMRT. Excellent. Uh, mid Excellent. Because we know that that is the gold standard for your level of prostate cancer. Oh, I see. Okay. Okay. I mean. Um, I, I thought I sent you the. Um, I thought I sent you the uh, the article from um, Paul Allen, and I guess I forgot to do it, so I'll send it to you afterwards. Okay, but that that is the gold standard. That article was from 2017, and like I say, the only change really has been to offer two sessions of SBRT or three sessions of SBRT instead of the seeds. Um, to talk about the heart effects, as long as you exercise on a daily basis and you eat right, um, you will be on top of it. Oh, I see. Okay. So, so I mean, so now I'm, I'm wondering which is more lethal, the cardiovascular risk of heart cardiovascular disease or the, uh, you know, slow growth of the prostate cancer? You know, in my opinion, the slow growth of the the slow growth, or maybe not so slow growth of the prostate cancer, because you can manage the heart, you can manage the heart situation. Well, can I ask you what level of PSA? Well, I mean, what would you expect my PSA nadir to be after, um, after the after ADT and I am RT, like less than point zero uh, point zero. Uh, I mean, now 0 0.2 or or lower than that? It, it really depends um, on how effective the radiation is. But in my own case, 
uh, it was forced down to zero, which yours will be. So it'll be an artificial level of zero. So when you're, as your PSA starts to fall, that's a function of the hormone therapy. It's not a function of the radiation treatment. And then in my case, it, it rose to 0.98 over a period of, I think it was about eight or 11 months after I finished. And I can explain that to you another day. Um, and then it started to fall after that. And it's gone down to undetectable, which is less than 0.1, which is all you need to worry about. You don't need, you don't need a uh, ultra sensitive test. You're not having your prostate out. Less than 0.1 is fine. And it fell to that level um, in 2000 and, 13, I think, and it's been down there ever since. So should I be worried about like micro mets that aren't uh, detectable on a yet on a PSMA scan? Well, that's why you're doing the that's why you're doing the therapy. That's why you're doing uh, hopefully 80 at least 18 months, if not 30 months. That's what exactly why you're doing that therapy. Okay. So what should you be worried? Yes, if you do six months, you should be worried. If you do 18 months to 24 to, to 30 months, which is the protocol, the chances are you'll have success, but you may not. I mean, I have another good buddy who we lost to prostate cancer, I believe about six or eight months ago, and he did the treatment the same as I did, except he stopped his hormone therapy after six months because he couldn't work. And he had a he had a corner off his job, and his disease right. came back. Okay, so I okay, I, I tough it out. Yeah, I toughed it out for twenty eight months, and knock on wood, it's been great. Let's just open it up because we've got a bunch of new people, and let me see if there's anybody else who wants to talk. Jim Marshall, go ahead. Yes, Tuck. Anyway, I was on the ADT for five years, uh, took a holiday, uh, testosterone has recovered and the last hit is now 428. So 18 months on it, I don't think is a problem. Uh, Jeff. You know, my, my, T, my T is down to like 35 right now. Um, is that, okay. is that? That's uh, good. Will it go down? Is that is that good or bad? You because, want it uh, to go down. It'll go lower. Go away. It'll go below twenty. But then it might take. From what I read, like uh, on Tall Allen's post, it's like uh, every six months of uh, of ADT will be uh, oh, on Lupron will be a year and a half to recover. A so year. Figure, figure, figure. It takes twice the time that you were on. But Took, are you more concerned about your testosterone, or are you more concerned about getting a durable remission? Uh, are you, yeah, probably, yeah. Well, I, I understand that prostate. Uh, well, I'm, I'm I'm afraid with my low T, I'm a I, I'm a develop like uh, cardiovascular disease. Okay. And like, uh, Stay in the moment. Like, like a heart attack or stroke. Stay in, not if you exercise, not if you eat right. Stay oh. in the moment, okay? There's a million and one things that can kill you, and some of these treatments are not great, but you've got to stay with us and stay in the moment because if you, if you don't do the hormone therapy, there's a good chance you won't survive. Um, so is loop one enough, or do I need to also take? Okay, that I, I, we've uh, got to uh, we've got to keep moving. I I don't have time to keep you. You'll come back. You'll ask all these questions. Make a note of what okay. we don't answer, and you'll come back. But probably okay, loop one is enough. They, they're not going to give you a Kaiser. You're not going to get a second line antiandrogen with T three with with T three C. You might get it if you wanted to get out of the Kaiser system and go over to UCLA, you might get them to do it, but it's not going to happen. 
Jeff Marchi and then Steve Rue, and then we'll we'll move on. And we'll come back to you to close. Jeff Marchi. At, at, at 55, your TH, your testosterone is likely to come back much quicker than it is if somebody in their 70s. It almost always does. As far as Orgovix, I'm on I'm in Kaiser. I take Orgovix. You just have to ask your doctor for it. You have to be may have to be a little uh, aggressive, but you tell them that's what you want. But the problem is you're not on Medicare. See, I pay nothing for it because there's a limit of how much you have to pay. Where uh, Argovix costs about three thousand dollars, and I'm not sure exactly how much your copay is going to be, but it probably is going to be significant since you're not on Medicare. And uh, so I, it's another thing to consider. Um, three thousand. That's three thousand dollars a month, too. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Three, yeah. Three, yeah. And, uh, uh, thanks, Jeff. So, but but at fifty-five, you you really are likely to have it come back sooner. Your your testosterone, it's it it is works better for younger people. Yeah, my my testosterone. I was fifty-six when I was diagnosed, and my testosterone came back in about. Uh, 18 months, I think, and I was on it for 28. So in my case, it, it wasn't double, but as 100% um, right. Uh, Steve Rue. Well, I, uh, two things I wanted to point out. The first was, uh, do you, if you remember, I was on the Lupron, and then I took that brief holiday from that, Rick. Remember that? Before mm -hmm. I went to see Dr. Heath. Uh, and when I uh, skipped one Lupron injection, I was taking a 90-day Lupron injection. And, and I don't know if you remember that, Rick, but I, I was telling you guys my T-score came back up to 287 or something. It jumped right back way up. Right. Uh, so that's not something to worry about that. Everybody's different. But in my case, it just came, the T came way back up. But the Orgovix thing, when I finally saw Dr. Heath and got got a good recommendation from these guys to see a good GU uh, oncologist. That was the first thing she did was, was to get me on the Orgovix uh, as well as the Abiraterone. And uh, I had some of that seminal uh, vascular invasion uh, and, and I'm real happy with my treatment now. I'm getting the right treatment with the dual, the duple uh, treatment. Uh, but yeah, but, but the, Orgovix, the Orgovix, I want to say this was the guys, the guys at my hospital, my doctors were able to find and enroll me in that ten dollar copay for Orgovix. So my Orgovix was only ten dollars uh, per month. Uh, on yeah, on but Steve, Steve, time out. Okay. Um, it's different when you're in Kaiser and it's an HMO. So okay. all these things that work for you don't work for Took. It's helpful to tell us because other people are not, but it won't work for two. The other thing is, if I remember correctly, Steve, you had other metastasis, didn't you? No, not, there was no true metastasis found. So you only had seminal vesicle invasion? That's right, in a, in a super, uh, in, a, right. in, a, in a super high uh, 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 score, you know, was it five, right. four, or whatever so, the hell it was? I mean, that's sort of what I, what I said, just said to Tuke is that some doctors will give you the abiraterone, some will not. I, I think it's going to be real hard to get it at Kaiser, but okay. you can, you know, would I, would I have taken abiraterone along with the Lupron back in 2007? It wasn't really available, but yeah, if they would have prescribed it for me, I would have taken it. And, um, well, I think it would be good just to, try to ask about that Orgovix. Uh, they're willing to, they're willing to extend that plan to a lot of people i don't know if they'll get you, it through you kaiser, cannot but... get it at, K at kaiser geez okay okay you you can't they don't work with kaiser Orgovix doesn't work with kaiser that's a shame yes geez but sorry um all dennis right. that's all i wanted dennis carden you had your hand no. up yeah, just just a quick question, and I joined late, so I apologize. Um, so I had a quick question around uh, maybe the the, the uh, I have a four four plus three. Hold on, so Mr. Carden. 
Hold tight. Oh, I'm on the wrong topic there. Okay. Okay. This is not, this, we're talking about Took. So is this okay. something to do with Took? All right. So, so I'm, I'm similar to the gentleman that was just speaking. I, I've got um, Aetna and I'm making use of the $10 a month copay. Okay. Yes, yeah, so that's been helpful. Right. But again, it, it works really well. But when you're in some of these HMOs, they don't work. They, the yeah. problem is that, that, that Medivant doesn't work. Sumatovan doesn't work with Kaiser Permanente. That's too bad. And, and, and my to, six months actually said after six months, I, I have to go right up to the $3,000 a month thing as well. Okay. Yeah. And I'm afraid, and Dennis, please come back next week. We've got four Absolutely. new men this week, and, and so we couldn't take another new man anyway. But Ben will be here and come in next week, and make sure you come in in the first 10 minutes, and we'll get you down as a new, as a new man. And you'll feel, feel free to contribute, but we can't really get into your yep. situation no until next no week. I'm, uh, Pfizer two, does have a couple of different benefits for people who are lower income that in order to get discounts on prescription drugs and Argovix is probably one of them. I know Daralutamide was, they kept offering it to me. Okay. We should, uh, we should help Rick get on to the next guy Ooh, now because uh, there's a lot of time pressure. Ooh, is there anything else that you want to say before we move on? Uh, oh, I was, I was just curious, uh, would it be, able, would it, I, be able to exercise like an, uh, on a mountain bike with the with that uh, stress mm -hmm. on the prostate be too too much? Is that a good idea? Amen. It's very good. Amen. Okay. Amen. <laughs> it's Absolutely. A, it's, uh, it's a very it's a very good idea. Come back next week and we will work with you on exercise. We just don't have the time this week. When you come in next week and, and Ben asks you, do you want time? The answer is yes, I'd like to talk about exercise. Okay. okay. Uh, thank you very much for everybody uh, for your insight. Tom, oh. uh, you, you got the picture. Um, and let's, let's move through your situation. How did you find us, Tom? Uh, I found, us, found you guys through um, Jeff Marchi. Okay. Are you a Kaiser person? Yes, I am. Okay. And um, do we have your email address? Are you on our mailing list? Yes. Okay. How old are you? I'm 71. Okay. And uh, you live in Oakland? No, I live in Orangevale, which is just outside of Sacramento, California. Right. Okay. That's where I got my seeds at Rosemont. Um, so um, what year were you first diagnosed? Um, well, it was 2021. And what was your Gleason score and your PSA level? Three plus flow, excuse me, three plus four. Yep. And um, as I recall, it was seven or eight. Okay. And, um, and you were at Kaiser and, uh, with the urologist, I assume, because that's where everybody starts at Kaiser. And yeah, what did they... the urologist that, uh, did the biopsy. And, and was there anything unusual in the biopsy? Did they find anything? No. No, they didn't find anything unusual. I mean, other than cancer. Okay, so th there was no crib reform, or there was no ex extra capsular extension, or there was nothing like nothing un unusual like that. No, no. Okay, so what treatment did you choose? Um, after a lot of uh, thought, study, and consternation, I ended ended up choosing SBRT and I had five uh, treatments. Okay. And um, in, in the um, uh, Rosemont or somewhere up in, somewhere up in the Sacto area? 
Um, it was at our, our Roseville. Um, Roseville. Right, yeah. Sorry. Yeah. I meant to say Roseville. Sorry, I said Rosemont, but it was Roseville Kaiser. That's 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 where I got my seeds. Um, and what was the result of that treatment back in 21 or 22? Was this 22 that you got the treatment or still in 21? Still in 21. Um, you know, they, uh, the radiologist told me uh, expect a, a possible bounce in your PSA and um, it had gone down. Um, it, it was floating between like two and three and I think the lowest it had gotten was one and a half and then it bounced up to four and I expressed some concern to the radiologist. He says, I don't worry about it. I've seen this before. It'll come back down. Um, it kind of, for the last two or three years, it kind of hovered around two or three. And then I was having some back issues and um, pain in my hip. They did an MRI and discovered that I um, uh, all of a sudden had stage four metastatic cancer. And, they, and they followed the MRI a week later with a pet. Yeah, this was in what year? Twenty. Um, it was this year. It was oh, this, in this year. in May, late May of this year. Um, I had a rather large tumor in the top of my right femur. Um, I had a uh, tumor on my hip, and a tumor. Uh, small on my lymph node. I don't remember which one. It's in the hip area. Okay. Did, had they done any scans um, originally? Did they do a bone scan originally? No. They did not. No, I, I just was, I was just totally shocked and blown away by this like seemingly overnight metastasis yeah but it probably wasn't seemingly overnight well i know i well for me it was seemingly overnight but i'm sure it was um it was growing there all the time yeah um you know this is one of the reasons why we always tell people to send out their slides and i should have said to took you should you, you should still get your slides reread um by by ming Zhu. somebody will put ming Zhu's information in there but you just tell kaiser you want a second opinion on your slides because we want to know be sure that you're four plus three because if you're four plus five or worse it, it may affect the treatment right now no i'm three but, plus four but you know tom you were three plus four but if you would have sent i sent my slides out and i got different opinions from kaiser than kaiser okay. And so they didn't send your slides out. You had a four in your number and they didn't do a bone scan. All of those things we would have counseled you to do. And the chances yeah. are that you weren't three plus four originally, you were maybe higher and that you may have had some metastasis four years ago. Well, that's what I suspect, yes. So, um, so if, he, if, he, if he had a prostatectomy, he would have found out he was higher but because he had the radiation. You don't find that out. That's right. Right. Because they slice it up. So um, are you are you part of the um, club who um, the Ancan club who goes to see uh, Dr. Hartstock? No, no, I just discovered uh or heard about her from um, uh jeff just two days ago okay well you have to get your butt over to her as quickly as you can okay because um i am not thrilled and never have been and i think most kaiser patients will tell you that their medical oncologists don't do a great job with advanced prostate cancer okay now you are, you are really lucky because in 
Northern California, you have Dr. Hartstark, who I knew back in 2012 when she was at UCSF. And not only is she lovely and wonderful, but she's also very smart and she's a very good doctor. That said, um, she sometimes has her hands tied in what she can prescribe um, versus what the protocol is because she sort of has to step above and beyond to get a lot of things done. Yeah, yeah. But um, there will be no, there should be no pushback at all for you to get, she's, she's now at Geary. She's, um, she, she was over uh, uh, in Oakland. She's now at Geary. But you should have no problem getting probably a video. You, I doubt you'll have to schlep into uh, the city to get to get it. But you need okay. to move. You want her as your quarterback, as Jeff Marchi will has probably told you already. Um, yeah. What treatment have they put you on? Well, I uh, I went through ten courses of radiation to the, um, the femur and the spot on the hip. And for some reason, I still haven't gotten a decent answer. The radiologist uh, decided not to radiate the lymph node, which is in the hip area. Uh -huh. He said, well, the, the hormone therapy will take care of all of that. So um, I have a consult with another oncologist tomorrow and i'm going to bring that up but what uh, type of oncologist are you consulting um, with tomorrow well I, I i don't know i it's i just asked for a, a referral to a different oncologist they didn't specify what kind it, uh, he is okay is it a radiation oncologist or a medical no oncologist? no it's a medical oncologist okay so 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 this will be the first time that you see your medical oncologist. Is this right? No, no. This will be the second. Um, I after uh, well, about the time I was getting every the the femur radiated, I saw a medical oncologist, and he started me on Lupron and Abiraterone. Okay. I hope he. I hope he gave you uh, Casadex first. Oh yeah, yeah. You say oh yes, oh yes, but I've no, known no, I, cases, yeah. I've known cases at Kaiser where they haven't done that. <laughs> no, no, I, I distinctly remember taking it. Okay, because sometimes they forget, as happened with a very dear buddy of mine. No, actually, it was the radiation oncologist that prescribed that. that. Okay, right, right out um, of the gate. Okay, um, so. Have they done any tumor testing on you yet? No, I don't know what so, that is. Okay, so have you had any testing to see if you have an inherited mutation? Yes, and everything's fine there. Okay, have they tested your tumor to see what mutations you have in your tumor? Yeah, they did, and I don't, I, I don't remember all of the medical jargon and all of that, but um, the re, I remember the oncologist saying, um, you know, it's exactly what I would have expected. Okay. So just ask that oncologist tomorrow, are there any mutations? Uh, are there any somatic mutations? Somebody will put somatic in the chat window for you. That means mutations your body has made itself. Okay. And, Thank you. And also tell, ask the oncologist, the medical oncologist, tell him you want an opinion with, um, or you'd like to shift your care as your quarterback medical oncologist to Dr. Hartstock. Okay. Okay. I certainly will. And you have to advocate for yourself. You'll have to push for that. You may get some pushback, but yeah. at Kaiser, you can ask for your doctor. Yeah. All right. Yeah. And if you have any issues, Tom, I'm happy to send, we're happy to send uh, Dr. Archdark a note. Jeff, 
Jeff, Jeff has a good, finally, he has a good relationship. It's been up and down a little bit, but I think it's pretty good right now. So, because uh, he's been behaving himself with Dr. Hartstark and she's, so, but we'll get you to Dr. Hartstark. Um, Thank you. Yeah, okay. I'd also want to mention that yes. the, the, the biggest issue for me is fatigue. I, my fatigue is just, it's crippling to me. Okay. Um, I can barely you get out of it. Exercising? I'm sorry? Are you exercising? Yes. Yes, I am. Uh, I'm exercising um, vigorously three days a week. Um, wh when I had the, uh, the, the tumor in the femur uh, diagnosed, they put a titanium rod in my femur because I was... Um, boy, I'm getting a battery low sign here. I'm going to have to go back and plug this thing in. Uh, so I'm, I'm, I'm walking down the hallway. Bear with me, please. Um, yeah. so, um, I forgot where I was. Um, so you, you said that they needed to put a rod in your femur because. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Rod in the femur and I'm still recovering. From that, um, it was the most painful thing I've ever experienced in my life. Rehabbing from that was with a, I started out having to be in a wheelchair, then a walker, and now I can uh, hobble okay. around with a cane. Um, and, uh, so that's been, been part has, of the, the struggle in, in terms of okay. exercise. So I'm sorry to keep rushing you through, but we still got two more. No, I, I understand. I understand. Um, have you, have they given you any help with physical therapists and exercise therapists at Kaiser? Yes. Okay. So you got to keep working with them. Um, the best thing we can say to you is you've got to get your heart rate up to help you with the fatigue. So when you're exercising, you've got to get it to a point where you're breathing hard and your, and your heart rate is high. Um, yeah, that's that's part of the problem that I have is with my bum right leg. Um, I, I there's only so much exercise I can do um, and tolerate the pain. Well, but you don't have to be using your leg. They can put you on one of those one of those. Yeah, things yeah, I do. I do. Know. Yeah, I do that too. But I can't seem to get my heart going fast well enough. that's where you've got to work with the physical therapist and you've got to get them to help you because you need to do that to help you with your muscle strength again okay. come back in next week and 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 keep coming um you're on our mailing list i think at this point so keep coming i just want to give a plug for everybody here for Men Speaking Freely, which this week is on Thursday. Um, Dr. John will be moderating, and that is to discuss everything except treatment. We don't discuss treatment in that group, but it is a fantastic group, and you can go on and sign up for the reminder. It should go out tomorrow. And uh, it's free and drop in, and it's in this same room at this same time. Dr. Jeff, very quickly. Yeah, uh, Tom, d d have you had a DEXA scan done for osteoporosis? I don't know what that is, so the answer do you, is no. Do you, do you have osteoporosis? Not that I'm aware of. Okay. And have they discussed with you with bone mets uh getting on a drug like prolia uh oh, to to protect okay. your bones great point no i did they did do a bone scan however this is a bone density test have you had okay. a bone density test okay kaiser I, I'm, 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 all you have to do is ask Right. Okay. You again tomorrow. They they should have done this as protocol. They need to check your bone density, and then just as 
Dr. Jeff says, speak to them about putting you on a bone strengthener. Okay. You know, I mean, now that I think about it, I think that scan I had was a bone density test. Now that I okay. think about it. And do you know what it said? All I can, they said it was unremarkable and normal and nothing to be concerned about. Okay. Notwithstanding, you should still be on a bone strengthener with your okay. diagnosis. So talk to them tomorrow about a bone strengthener, either either a bis bisphosphonate or something like denosumab, something, either something like uh, Zometa, Zoledronic acid, or something like denosumab. In the past, they've, they've used Zometa, but they may have moved now finally to denosumab. Okay, is, no, is that, they're giving me, they're is giving that me um, because of the Lupron or, or Zytiga that I'm on? Yes, because you have additional risk for bone weakening because of the hormone therapy that you're on. Okay. okay. Heart doesn't like denosumab. She feels that it can, the jaw problem is too, uh, too well, much of a problem. Well, the problem is, is in both, but... Guys, we've really got, we got to move on. Sorry, but Jeff, that's a great point. Len, you had your hand up too. Anything quick? I was just going to make the same point that Dr. Jeff made about the bone strengthening agent. So if you're going to see your oncologist tomorrow, make sure you talk to them about that. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So you want a bone strengthening agent and it'll probably be Zometa. Okay. okay. Which they give in with infusion every three months. Okay. They prefer Fosamax usually. I took that for about four okay. years. Okay. You don't 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 mess with the Fosamax. You tell them you want Zometa every three months. Okay, because the Fosamax is is a pain in the butt to take, and you've got to get up early, and you got you can't eat, and this, that, and the other. So you're you're much better off, and you retain a lot more of the Zometa than you do of the Fosamax. There's a much okay, higher can somebody retention. write in the chat what uh, the name of that drug you just said? Yeah, somebody, somebody, I'll, I'll, I'll put it in with you for you right now. Z O N E T A Zometa. Okay, but what Got you it. want, what you want is a is is a bone strengthening agent. It may not be Zometa, um, but if they offer you Fosamax. You tell them no. You want the infusion because you retain a lot more of it. Okay. Okay. It's it's another sort of cheapo move on on Kaiser's part to pass you off with the Foster Max. Um, Thank you very much. Okay. Luther. Um, hey. How old? Oh, one thing for you and uh, Luther. How old are you? First of all. Forty-three. Forty-three. So one thing for you and for Took is we have an under 60s group. And yeah, I saw and I was looking for that and then I saw the YouTube of these and I realized it was appropriate for me as well. And I have an appointment tomorrow, so I decided to drop in. Okay, so I'll make sure that you are signed up, you and, and, and that. And are you signed up for our for our uh, reminders? Yeah, I'm, getting, I'm getting the digest notes or, or something. So, yeah, I think I am. You get you got a reminder for this meeting. I don't know if I got the reminder. I got the like the chat conversation or something. No, no. Okay, I'll go find okay. the right sign up then. So all you got to do is put your email address in the chat window, either to everybody or to me alone. It doesn't matter, and I'll make sure you get si you get signed on. Okay. Okay. Now, um, where where do you live? I'm in Portland, Oregon. Okay. And when were you first diagnosed? Uh, March of this year. Okay. And um, what was your Gleason score at diagnosis? Uh, four plus three equals seven. Okay. With and your PSA? Uh, 3.1. 3.1. And um, what did the biopsy show? Uh, introductal perineural invasion, nine out of 13 cores. Okay. Um, and um, 
the interductal is what throws you into the high risk. Uh, uh, well, I'm I'm post surgery, so there's more. <laughs> okay, so you did so. Where where did you go? Uh, OHSU. Chris Amling did the surgery. Okay. Okay. And um, and uh, he did the surgery, and what did the and what did the surgery show? Uh, post surgery pathology upgraded to a four plus five. Yep. Uh, seminal, seminal vesicle invasion, but good yep. margins. Yep. Um, clear for bladder neck and extra prostatic extension. Okay. Did they do a PSMA scan? Before the surgery, yes. And it showed the one lymph node inside the prostate where they're going to remove, but nothing else at the time. Okay. That's great. Um, so um, what has happened since? your okay. since what when was the surgery in june it was in on may 22nd may 22nd okay one one no not really relevant for the group but i had a pulmonary embolism two and a half weeks later oh geez i'm i'm the one out of 500 where that happens supposedly yeah we we've seen yep. we've seen a couple of other people have that ha happen to as well so it's yes, I'm off, I'm off the blood thinners right now, thankfully. Okay, so that's great. It makes you makes you worry. Um, now, um, how's your PSA doing? Yeah, six week PSA was 0.34. We confirmed that a week later. Got the same reading. Um, Q visits to oncology, etc. Uh, we had another PSMA PET, uh, which th shows three lymph nodes, right in right inferior gluteal right internal iliac and left juxta aortic. Okay. And so what treatment, first of all, who, who's your medical oncologist? Ronald Ung at OHSU. And then my radiation oncologist is Arthur Hung. Okay, now is, I, I know that they are really short of radiation of GU medical oncologists. I'm hoping that Dr. Ung is a GU medical oncologist. Well, I'm looking at his bio page. He is, specializes in neurologic cancers. Okay. And it looks like he graduated University of, Chicago, uh, University of Illinois, Chicago in 2017. And where did he do his resident, his fellowship? Uh, residency was at Wake Forest in 2020. And fellowship, uh, University of Illinois, Chicago, 23. Okay, yeah. so he's I think I remember, I, I, I happen to have been looking at, at their docs recently, and I seem to remember I see that. Um, it's as, right now, it's as good as you're going to get, unfortunately, yeah. at, at OHSU. Um, so what treatment have they put you put you on, Luther? Yep, I am almost six weeks into ADT right now. Uh, started with bicalutamide for two weeks, then the three-month Elgard shot, and then abiraterone. Okay. And so far, not too bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are you exercising? Yep, every day, like I've never done before, because I'm in Good bad man. shape and have some work to do. Good um, man. Good man. Um, my, it's tomorrow, so I my P, my PSA is undetectable already. Right. Um, have they done, since it's on my mind, did they, did they do a bone scan? Did they no, do a bone density? Sorry. Did they do a bone density test? Uh, they said they were going to do one, uh, at some point to get a baseline, but that may not be right away. And so I was going to ask him tomorrow if we need to get that done. Yeah, yeah. I mean, look, I was, I was older than you. I was 56, but they did a bone density scan and I, they, I found out that I, I had osteoporosis. I mean, Yep. You could have knocked me over with a feather. So you just don't know. So you really need to do it. And the fact is that if they're putting you on long-term hormone therapy, which they are, because you'll probably be on this for a couple of years, Two years. Um, you've got to also talk to them about bone strengthening. Yep. Same yeah, we, dis we discussed it at my last visit. I was going to ask tomorrow about getting that done. 
Um, I think maybe they weren't that urgent about it because I told them I had been lifting weights for about four years. Yep. Uh, so um, I, I do think that um, it's a conversation that, that you need to have. Um, and, you know, the other, the other thing is that um, we haven't talked much tonight about diet, but, but diet's also important, and you probably know that, and um, cutting out the red meat, cutting out the high dairy stuff, and and it does make a difference yeah i'm eating more chicken and fish than i used to no more ribeye every night unfortunately you're not the only one but what <laughs> we tell everybody is if you eat it once a month it ain't gonna hurt you and yeah. you're gonna feel better for it so you know each time you take a mouthful of that next ribeye appreciate right. it right yep um, um in the and the plan, oh, I'm, I'm cutting you off. You might have more questions, right? Um, yeah, I wanted to ask you about um, any genetic testing. Uh, the orders are in for the blood test. I met with a genetic counselor a few weeks ago. I was planning on getting that draw tomorrow when I'm down at the waterfront. Okay. And did they, did they run a, um, I mean, they really should be running a somatic test for you as well which they could do off of your, um, well, you, you mean, ideally they want to do it off of one of those lymph nodes. Okay. But, um, better than your prostate because sometimes the, the genetic, the genomic pattern in the metastasis, um, may show a driver that isn't evident in the, in the gland itself. But um, it would be, especially since you're a young guy, it would be good to know what mutations you harbor because it can influence your, your treatment pattern. And that's not going to come from the blood draw? Well, it could come from the blood draw, but probably not at 0.34. Um, your, your PSA isn't, isn't high enough. Your tumor burden is not going to be high enough. Okay. So they're probably going to have to take it from solid tissue, but it is it is standard of care. Okay, I'll they did get um, one, email. They did get one uh, lymph node on the prostatectomy. It sounds like. Oh yeah, they did. Yeah, yeah. If they could take it from that lymph node, that's that's. Thank you, Doctor John. Yes, that that's really where you want where it wants to come from. So you do need some. Uh, you, you need that and you can insist on it. And if they push back, you can say, but it's standard of care. Okay. It's in the NCCN guidelines. Okay. Yeah. Good note. Okay. Uh, questions for us and then we'll throw it open. Yeah, a couple. So the plan is to do 33 sessions of radiation. Um, I'm hoping to get that scheduled relatively soon. Uh, the radiation oncologist told me within three months of starting ADT, he could do focal therapy there. And I'm really looking for basically anything that's out of line um, with what should be happening at this point. I'm on the I'm on the dual therapy for the uh, in, for the uh, hormone therapy, so that's good. It seems to be what is supposed to happen right now. Um, and then at some point. You know, if, you know, I, I assume my treatment plan right now is reasonable. If it's not, let me know. Um, but I, I, I assume I will probably want another opinion long term um, as we go through this with a different oncologist somewhere else, um, especially if it comes back later. So are there other people I should be talking to? So. I mean, it does sound everything's right, except that um, you, you, you got to get that bone scan. You got to talk about bone um, bone strengtheners with them. I mean, the, the doublet therapy is right. The IMRT is right. Um, I mean, it sounds right. And we just got to see and probably a couple of years of hormone therapy is, is what you got to be looking at as a minimum. We got a bunch of guys that you can talk to um, and we can hook you up with um, who are younger and similar situations. Um, 
you're doing the exercise, you're on top of the diet. Um, anybody else have anything they want to say to Luther? No? Rick, would, uh, would triplet therapy be appropriate for Luther? No, I don't think so, because he doesn't have enough meds. I so think, doc, I think... That's what they told me. Dr. Ong told me that, you know, the chemo treatments would only be appropriate if there was lots of cancer at the, at the moment. Um, and that immunotherapy isn't necessarily there for prostate cancer, and it's a little brutal right now, is, is what I gathered. Yeah, um, I mean the only the only thing that might be appropriate, and you, but we have to manufacture it, is to get Provenge. I mean, it would be a great Provenge would be great for you right now, um, but really you need three successive increases in your in your PSA, and the only way we're going to get that is by holding you off the off of the hormone therapy for. A month or so and doing three tests otherwise they won't they won't approve it but we've known people who do that and it can be manufactured but now it's the now it'd be great for you to get the provenge i had not heard of that okay provenge is cipulosal tea it is the original immunotherapy for um prostate cancer there are some docs who like it and there are some docs who don't think much of it that pretty blonde behind General Joel's right shoulder, she won't give it to you because she's not a fan. I happen to be a fan because the guy who discovered it is a doctor I've worked with who's now actually up at UW. And he, that's who I'd send you to if you wanted a second opinion. But okay. you don't need, right now, I, I think everything is, is going hunky-dory. But see what, see what Dr. Ung says about... Uh, about cipulosal tea and if he says well you know you're not resistant you say well it doesn't actually say that it says you've got to have three successive increases in your psa okay. <laughs> so okay can we move on to our last guy i've just got a question i think oh sorry who has the question jeff and his last one was so good we should get him <laughs> That's right. Go ahead, Jeff. Dr. Jeff. Um, so, Luther, you're on abiraterone, I hear you? Yes. Uh, how much? A thousand milligrams. So I, I can't eat for an hour. So I right. take it and have my coffee for a little bit. And you're also on prednisone? Uh, I'm actually on a higher course of prednisone right now for my GI issues. I have ulcerative colitis, unfortunately for me. Uh, but I have five milligrams prescribed for the long term. So you take five milligrams a day? Yep. Right now I'm taking 20 because I'm shutting down an autoimmune thing, but coming coming down. And it'll be five, and I have the Elgar three-month shot. Luther, did they tell you you'd be high risk for side effects with radiation therapy with ulcerative colitis? Yeah. Um, so Dr. Hung told me that there's two things for uh, the radiation. Uh, it's, I think my note said it was about a 1% increase in risk per year going forward for bowel cancer uh, from the radiation. And since I'm young, um, that definitely will compound over time. Um, I'm already higher risk because of my UC, uh, but I'm monitored pretty closely. You know, I have yearly colonoscopies by my GI. Um, and also, I guess there's an increased risk of sarcoma over the long term also from the radiation. Uh, but my response to him well, was, well, it's cancer now versus increased risk going forward. And uh, I'll be happy to navigate that in 20 years um, was my kind of reaction. But. I was just thinking more about exacerbating the UC. Yep. It's a it's a potential Tough problem. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And there was a little cross chatter between 
him and my urologist and that's why typically patients that have uc when they're considering primary treatment he would prefer them to go over to surgery rather than radiation okay. yeah. how long have you been on 20 prednisone uh just the last four days i did two weeks at 30. i'm tapering down okay I, I would question them though whether five milligrams of prednisone is going to be enough for you okay. on the abiraterone i mean i did five and i had issues with five i got hypokalemic and they bumped me up to 10 five bi twice a day and and that's gone away but i'm not so sure five is is enough well i'm also on biological immune suppressants as well it takes delara uh, so it's a little bit of a cocktail unfortunately guys i'm, I'm gonna have to jump in because as much as i'd like to dig into this with luther we're gonna have to do it next week okay. um because we've still got another guy and we haven't gotten to any of the uh, uh, anyone else yet so i know i mean it is important but we'll, we'll come back to it sorry all right thanks everyone um and if somebody can lower jeff's hand because i um my uh, go-to is completely frozen so i can't put anything in the chat window i can't lower hands i can't do anything here um charlie thanks for waiting no problem thank you guys for listening Okay, you fro you're frozen up right now on your picture. No, he isn't, Rick. He isn't frozen for us. Okay, he is on mine. All right, here's what I'm gonna do, guys. I'm gonna I'm gonna go out and come back in again because obviously I got a problem with my um with my go to. Um So, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Yeah, I, I don't know what's going on with my go-to. All right, well, if you can hear me, let me let me keep on going, and then I'll, I'll some, I don't even know how I can get out of this because I can't get anything to, to work on my go-to. Um, Charlie, um, how old are you? 72. Okay, and where do you live? Reno, Nevada. Okay. And how do you hear about us? I was poking around YouTube and I saw some of your, uh, your recorded uh, sessions. I've been following you on your recorded sessions on YouTube for about, I don't know, six or seven months now, maybe a little Oh, longer. dear. All right. So you you got our number, right? <laughs> yeah, I know what you guys are doing and, and, uh, and uh, I think it's pretty neat. I like it. Um, and and do we have your? Are you signed up to get our reminders or not? Well, I put my email address in when I entered this session, so I don't know if I need to do something else. For that. Uh, I think we can find it if you put it in when you when you came to the session. If not, just go to the website and and sign and sign up. Um, okay. What year were you first diagnosed, Charlie? I was diagnosed in November of uh, 21. Okay, and what was your Gleason score and your PSA level at diagnosis? PSA level was 124, and the Gleason was 4 plus 5, 9. Okay, and um, what type of doctor did you see at that time and where? I saw a urologist initially. Who did the uh, did the biopsy on the uh, on the gland? Right, and and did that biopsy show um, how many cores were positive in that biopsy? Ten of ten. Okay, bingo. And um, and what treatment was discussed with you? Uh, ADT. I went on Casadex for a couple of weeks, and then I got my shot, the first shot of uh, Lupron, later that month. Okay. And did they do any scans? 
Yeah, we did. Uh, PSMA wasn't really available at that time, so it was a regular PET scan. And did they see any? Did they see any um, metastasis? Yeah, they found three. Where? Uh, left seventh rib. Uh, left parietal calvarium. I believe that's right behind the uh, ear. Right. And uh, C seven vertebrae. Okay. And they and they put you on ADT. Did they put you on a second line antiandrogen? Yeah, it took a little while. In January, they put me on a course of enzalutamide. Okay, so they added enzalutamide. This would have been, when you say January, January of 22 or January this year? January 22. Okay, that's fine. Okay. Um, and what sort of doc was, was this still with the urologist? Yes, I, I did make one visit to a... Uh, medical oncologist um, but it became pretty clear he really this fellow uh, nice enough fellow but I don't think he really knew about prostate cancer yeah he, yeah. he just told me to come back when uh, when I needed chemo yeah. So, 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 yeah so you had a urologist who was running your care and a medical yeah. oncologist who said come back when you need chemo and with, they were both in uh, Reno? Yes. Okay. So that was back in 22. And um, did you do any radiation therapy at that time? Yes. February of 22, radiation course, 47 sessions, two of which were, were for my tits to keep them from blowing up. Okay. Two were for what? She got my nipples to keep my breast from growing. Oh, oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. That 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 was a good thing for him to do. Okay, so you had forty-five plus. They radiated your chest. Right. Good job. Okay, I'm glad. I'm glad they thought to do that. Um. So. I'm not doing very well uh, here at my desk tonight. Um, sorry, my my pen just stopped working as well. It's like they don't want me doing this stuff tonight, I can see. Um, now, what's the, been the result of all of that? Uh, I stopped. Okay, here's the, here's the reason I'm really interested here. Uh, in November of last year was my last Lupron shot, which means two years. Okay. I wanted to do intermittent because over the course of the two years, I've been studying up on this, and I've been been listening to a guy called Dr. Schultz over at PCRI. Yeah. And he's convincing me that, that based on some studies, I believe it's the Stampede and the Chartered Study, this intermittent, I could take a holiday safely. So I wanted to take a holiday to see what extent the radiation helped me. Uh, I also wanted to get a PSMA to uh, confirm. So I started fighting to get a PSMA. It took me several months. And I had I started to have problems with my urologist. Um, so anyway, he wouldn't return calls or emails. So I showed up at my next Lupron shot, which was supposed to be January of this year. And I, I emailed the nurse practitioner saying that I wanted to talk to him about whether I could safely go on a holiday. Well, he never showed. She, she did a nurse ratchet on me and got pissed off because I, I told her I didn't want to get the Lupron shot. And she took <laughs> She took a she took offense to that, turned on her heel, and I haven't seen her since. Good. So that kind of it kind of pissed me off because I really wanted to talk to. I was insecure about taking the holiday. I wanted to talk to the doctor about it, and I just couldn't get to him. So uh, so uh, I haven't seen her since. 
however, she did schedule me for another visit with Canalis, who's the urologist. Okay, so let before let let, let me just cut in because we got to sort of try and wrap up pretty quickly. But okay. um, where is your PSA? Did your PSA get down to insignificant on the during the two years? What was the lowest it got to? The nadir is zero point one, and that occurred at uh, twelve eight twenty three. Okay, now when you say zero point one, were they testing? To how many decimal places places were they testing to on that zero point one? Uh, I'm not sure. It's LabCorp. I. Uh, I, I mean, I, my, I, I guess my question is this: um, they zero zero point one is fine if they're testing to zero point one or less than zero point one, but. Um, but you you seem to think that you got down to around the 0 0.1 level, right? Yeah, let me give you the test, okay? Of uh... no, 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 no. I don't. I can't. I we we can't. I can't okay. get into it. That that I just don't have the time. Sorry, Charlie, but we just yeah. don't today. Um, where is your PSA now? One point three. Okay. So, let let me just say my bit and then we'll throw it over throw it over to the guys during which i'm going to try and get out and get back in again so i can get stuff working um you got to get your ass to a genito urinary medical oncologist S sticking around with this urologist who doesn't want to talk to you doesn't want to give you a psma scan and all the rest of it you've just got to. Well, you let, let me i finally did i went to get a second opinion so i went to a second doctor in carson city by the name of Nixon. And as soon as I showed up for that one, all of a sudden the PSMA came through. Yeah. So I had a PSMA. Yeah, Charlie, you've okay. got to get to a Janito urinary specialist, somebody who specializes in prostate cancer, not just any, any doc. So you're going to have to go further afield. You're going to have to go down to SACTO or to, or to UCSF. Those are those are the two closest locations to you where you're going to find a Janito urinary medical oncologist, and and that's where your care needs to be, and they need to work with somebody local. So maybe working with the local guy, the guy in Carson is fine. Maybe working with the guy that you saw who said come back if you need chemo. That's that that, that maybe that that's fine, but you've got to get a Janito urinary medical oncologist running the ship. And you've heard us say that every, almost every session. Because otherwise you're not going to get the right treatment. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And and so, you know, my so my I guess the first thing I gotta say to you is get yourself a Janito urinary medical oncologist. And the second thing is come to some agreement with that medical oncologist at what PSA level you want to resume treatment. So for some of the guys here, it's two. For some of them, it's five. But you have to negotiate that out with your doctor. And then you'll go back on treatment, and we can talk about what the best treatment is. But those are the two things. Um, I'm going to leave this with – I'm going to leave this with Len and, and – and, um, and Dr. John to, 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 to navigate you for a little bit and just get some feedback and then we'll get to all the guys who need time. We'll, we will be running late tonight, guys. I'm just telling you up front. If you didn't figure it out. Go, uh, Dr. John or Len, can you step in? Because I've got to, somehow or other, I've got to get out of here. I'd like to know what the results of your PSMA scan were, uh, Charlie. Uh, I'm just uh, I'm down to uh, one met on the seventh rib. I'm clearing the pelvis, but they had a really a strange thing that was never explained to me. Uh... <laughs> Is there Charlie? 
Yes. <laughs> it's hazy pre-sacral soft tissue with low-level radiotracer uptake, which is non-specific. That means and, that uh, there were. That means that a little bit of a brightness showed up, but not sufficient to make the call that it's cancerous. Yeah, and then sclerotic lesion in the left lateral seventh rib. That's probably a scar from an old injury or even an old uh, metastasis that's been killed by radiation. Well, that's good news. Are you uh, with me in that, Len? I'm sorry? Yeah, he, yeah, in fact, he said he had a MET to T7, so yeah, that's right. It's a sclerotic lesion, meaning not active. A scar. So, so I can hear last oh, night from uh, are you, are you sorry, asking, uh, are you still on drug holiday or you want to know if you should be on it? What's your question? I'm still on drug holiday and the reason I dialed in today was I got Dr. Nixon in Carson City said, saying that radiation would help me on that, on that lesion. And then Canellis, the guy in Reno, says there's no point of that. And uh, he would recommend chemo. So I'm in an inflection point here. I just, I kind of need some direction on this. I don't want to go back on ADT, obviously, unless I have to. Kind of seems to us as though you have only one focus of cancer in your body right now on a rib. So but he's I a four see... plus five, the Gleason. He should yeah, but... be on two years of ADT. He was. He's already completed two years. Um, I, I don't see why they ruled out SBRT on that one metastasis, and it's the only focus of cancer in your whole body that your last PSMA uh, detected. Your PSA may be going up now. We don't really know. Your last Lupron shot must have been a, almost a year ago then. No, it was uh, November. Yeah, almost a year ago now. Yeah, almost a year. Okay. And he's he, and he's and he's and he's up to one point three. So I mean, this yeah. just this just reiterates what I was saying to you, Charlie. You got to get to somebody who knows what they're doing. Um, you, you're not a you're not really a candidate for chemo. The urologist is out of his depth. You don't have enough metastasis. Um, making, uh, yes, probably the, the, the uh, um, it's a good idea to shoot that spot that you have, except that it's a rib. So ribs are always very, very hard. You said it, it's, it's, it's in the rib. Ribs are always very difficult to focus on. So it may not be effective. And, um, and you've got to get back onto hormone th as much as you don't like it. You've got to get back onto hormone therapy at some point. Now it could be monotherapy, but none of the guys are going to give you monotherapy that you're talking to. So you've got to get your ass to a to a GU medical oncologist who knows what they're talking about and can and can, and can supervise your care. Otherwise, you're going to be dealing with with these cowboys. Okay, it looks like I got a six-month doubling time on my PSA. At what point do you think I should be concerned? Again, you've got to talk to a medical. We can't give you medical advice here. We can only navigate you. And the navigation we're giving you is get yourself the appropriate doctor. You don't have it. You, ha you, you haven't had it for a long time. And you've got to get the appropriate doctor. I realize how difficult it is in Reno. I have a good buddy who lives in Reno. I know it's not easy. But we can, there, there are doctors, there are Janito urinary medical oncologists at UC Davis. And if, you know, and if you're willing to go into, into San Francisco, there are some very good ones at UCSF. And neither of those are great options. I get it. But 
and until you've gotten one and they are your quarterback and they're working with a local person, you're never going to get the right idea. Your urologist is clueless to talk about chemo with one met is just not right. And, 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 um, you know, the idea from the guy in Carson city. Yeah, but he, it's not a bad idea. But again, if he's talking about radiating a rib, he doesn't know a lot about prostate cancer. Very, very difficult to radiate a rib. There's a guys in here who have not been able to radiate ribs because the target's too small. Well, so you know, go ahead. Rick, thank you very much for that. I appreciate that. I, I guess I'm going to do exactly what you say. I got to find another doctor because you got to find a doctor. Let me, Charlie, let me look for you at UC Davis and see who, um, who I can suggest the guy that I'm thinking of who's there is a urologist. So he's not the right guy. Um, but there are a couple of guys recently at UC Davis that are there and, and just make sure to, um, uh, make sure I have your, 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 um, email address, put it in okay. the chat window. I'll put it in the chat. Uh, I'm going to see my, uh, general practitioner tomorrow and ask her about whether she can find me a referral as well. Well, but tell her that it's got to be a Janito urinary medical oncologist. Okay. okay. Do you know, do you know that expression? Can I yeah, put it? In? If you want to elucidate on that for a minute, I don't know what exactly what that means. It means a, it means a medical oncologist who specializes in genito urinary cancers like prostate cancer, bladder cancer, testicular cancer. Okay. okay. And if you're going to see it and ask her, can she refer you to one at UC Davis? Because there, 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 there are at UC Davis. Okay. Are you? Are you? You must know the Reno area well. Is there any? There's no one here locally, huh? No. I don't know it well, but I know it well enough. You know, the the, the best you could have done, but now it's even dubious. You could have gone to Vegas. Um, there was a great guy there. We lost him last year, and I don't know who's taken over his practice. Um, yeah. But you could have gone to Vegas. But I would say at this point, and 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 he, and then he wasn't in a center of excellence. I don't think. Um, but I think I I would say UC Davis. I'll, I'll check. I'll check for you um, and see if there is anybody in Vegas, but I don't think so. Great. Thank you so much, Rick. I really appreciate it. Okay. And I know let's... you're busy. I'll get off. Okay. Um, guys, I'm so sorry that... Oh, did they check you for any... Uh, they do any genetic work on you, Charlie? No. Okay. Again, you got to do... you you got to get... See if you've got any inherited cancers. Somebody will put the... Or, Oh, somebody, can you put somebody put our promise link in there, please? And um, that you can get for free. And they should be testing. They should be trying to test you to make sure you you don't have any mutations. All right, Janita, you're only medical oncologist to everyone. Okay, I'm gonna whistle through, and we'll, I will stay as long as it takes, and we'll we'll get through to anybody. Now, um, does anybody have to leave early? And if you do, and you wanted time, please put your name in the chat window, and and I'll be sure to get to you. Okay, if you've got to jump off early, let me know. All right, so then I'm going to go down the list as I took it. Mark Valens, what's up, sir? Well, I, as you've heard in the past, I um, had switched from Extandi to Nebeka back in November and had a disaster. Yep. Um, then I, two weeks ago, I went 
back on Nubeca Darylutamide, and I'm doing a lot better this time. Um, but it's about 10 days into it. I was having real memory problems and um, getting stuck on real simple like math problems. And by afternoon, I was walking like a drunk. Um, my equilibrium was really bad and just very weak trying to pick anything up. Um, but I, I decided to stick with it and I'm, I'm doing better. It's, um, I'm, I'm getting by fairly well. Um, I finally got back to the gym and actually was able to do a pretty good workout. Um, but the brain, the brain problems still bug me that I just, I can't, can't remember things. I mean, we're re rebuilding our house that burned down in the bootleg fire three years ago. And I measure a space and it's 65 inches and I walk over to the saw and I can't remember what I just measured. And it's really frustrating. Um, but the last three or four days, it's getting better. So I just wanted to report on how that's coming and hope that I can report in another couple of weeks that it's getting better and better. Okay. Dan, I guess Dan left. He said he had to go. That's why I asked because he wanted time. Um, so are you taking just Nubeca alone, or are you, are you taking uh, Argovix or something else? I'm on Lupron, and uh, I just got my last. I just got a, a Lupron shot recently, a three month one, and they say that's my last one. Okay, I just think I, 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 the combination of the two. It's always been the uh, the uh, the uh, Argovix that I, I felt was the culprit with my memory and my brain fog more than the Nubeca. But, but if you're saying that Nubeca is the one that's doing it, maybe it is doing it. I'm just not aware. Of. <clears throat> I think it's far more likely it's the Lupron, Mark, not the Nubeca, because we know that. Nubeca has insignificant brain barrier penetration. Yeah. It's well established. That's what I've heard, but I've been on the Lupron for years. And well, it's then... cumulative, don't forget. It could, you know, you've been on it for years and now you're starting to feel the effects of the, I've, the brain. I've taken a couple holidays and it just, for me, I start up the darylutamide and something changes quickly for the worse. Okay. But, well, you're, like you're an said, anomaly. Um, maybe you should, shouldn't take it. Well, it's, I, I want to stick it out a little bit longer because it's, it's getting better, I think. Okay. So you said you just got a Lupron shot. Is, is that, yes. is that right? And, um, and it was a three month shot, right? Yes. You know, because I that I would have tried to go to monotherapy darylutamide and see if that if that did the trick, and that might be. I mean, I don't know. Well, my doctors here in Southern Oregon aren't quite as up on it, and um, trying to get through to Doctor Borno has become just about impossible. So you know, at UCSF. So, yeah, I mean, you may have to think about switching docs. Yeah. Um, and um, I have a great doc for you in Seattle. Um, I need to, I owe him a note, but I can ask him if he's taking patients. But Larry Fong is now up in Seattle and he's fantastic. Okay. Um, but I will, um, I will drop him a line this week because I do owe him a line and and um, see if if uh, if he can take but there's something going on which is is unusual um, because you responded with the, the first time um, I mean you you dropped the new Becker and you went 
what did you put in its place? Apalutamide? I can't remember. Enzalutamide. Enzalutamide. I, um, I had apalutamide messes really badly with my liver. Apalutamide messes with your liver. Yeah. But enzalutamide does not. Correct. Again, that doesn't make a lot of sense because they're so similar. Dr. Jeff, do you understand that one? It can happen. The similar drugs don't always produce the okay. same side effects. Um, how Did you feel worse on the enzalutamide than you feel now? Um, it's, it's similar. The, the only thing I can say is, and this, this is so vague. I don't know why I feel this way, but I feel like on the Daraluda, my, I feel happier. I feel better. Okay. And I, I'm still, I'm still dizzy. I got brain fog. But on some level, I feel better. Well, the dizziness and the brain fog, I would agree with Len, is probably more down to the Lupron than the Daraludamide. Well, it got and a whole lot worse than I went back on the Daraludamide. That's all I know. Well, because, again, you, you know, you, but it's not worse than when, it was on, when you were on the Enzalutamide. Yes, it is. Okay, so that's what I was asking. So, are you are you worse on the Enzalutum on the Darrow than you were on the Enz? Well, it, I'm working through it. Like I was saying, ten days after I started the Darrowlutamide, it was really bad. Now we're up over two weeks, and it seems to be getting better. Okay, I mean, again, go back to the Darrowlutamide is probably the to go back to the enzalutamide if you feel better on the ends. I'm, I want to try the darolutamide, but every, you guys always talk about how it doesn't cross the brain blood barrier and all. I'm waiting to, to feel the magic. And I'm, this okay. time I'm doing better than I did last time. Okay. All right. So we have um dan left us sadly because i would have gone to him first if he would have said he had to go um but we only have russ is russ still with yet yeah, no is russ still with us or not i don't, I see, don't him. see him no and we have stuart um so Still, okay, uh, Rick, I yes. can do any back my time and no, you're we are fine. You're fine. We we're, we're doing good because there were not too many people wanted questions. So you are great. Go right ahead, Stuart. Well, I, I, you deal with so many people. I don't suspect you to remember my circumstance, but it was similar to the discussion about second line uh, um, treatment. Uh, hormonal treatment and the first question i have is uh well my doc did not want to give me a second line drug i was taking i went through a course of radiation and uh and it started with lupron and i uh had to give up the abiraterone as a third because of liver concerns so that was taken away so i was essentially in a mono therapy with lupron and I, not knowing really how to ask these questions of a doc, I asked if they what what's next. And uh, her prescription for me was to hang on to this Lupron and do just uh, monotherapy until some such time in the future, which is linked to the second question I have, which is what is the difference between uh, standard practice of the NCCN and FDA approval? And I'm just wondering if those two are not the same and some of the docs are making decisions based upon FCCN and not 
uh, Food and Drug Administration or vice versa. Because okay, now so I, I, I'm not sure I'm being covered now appropriately or entirely. Maybe I am. I, I just don't know. Okay, so I, I don't let, – let, let's cover the first one. FDA rules as to what drugs have been approved for consumption for certain diseases. They, they, they stipulate when a drug should be taken in a disease process. The NCCN is saying what the protocols are. In other words, should you take this drug with another drug? And when should you take, take that drug? Um, I don't think I explained that very well. Would, would, would either Dr. Jeff, Dr. John or Len like to take another shot at that and see if you can do a better job than well, I just I think did. Maybe, maybe he'll understand if we just tell him every drug in the NCCN guidelines is FDA approved. Does that help? There's no such thing as an NCCN, NCCN guideline talking about a drug that has not been FDA approved. Hmm. So the FDA approval allows companies to market a drug for a certain use. And the NCCN guidelines say you should use this FDA approved drug for this condition and maybe in combination with other FDA approved drugs. Right. So, so they kind of set out the protocols, Stuart. Yeah. Now, in your particular case, she gave you abiraterone, but you didn't do well on the abiraterone because of the liver issues. Correct. I don't understand, and I don't know if anybody else might understand, but there was no protocol, there was no NCCN or anything else that said she couldn't replace it with one of the Ide brothers, darolutamide, enzalutamide, or apalutamide. So I don't really know why she decided not to put you back on a second line anti-androgen. And that is the question you have to answer, ask her. Why did you not put, put me on another anti-androgen? Yeah. That is a question. And you know, as I read through the, uh, the documents, sometimes it appears that you have to get sicker before you can get the medication. If she thought you were sick enough to give you the abiraterone, if in her opinion you needed the abiraterone, then she should have switched the abiraterone to something else. Because the, the acuity remained the same. Right. I'm just looking at my notes. Um, did you have... And I don't have a note. Did you have um, metastasis, de novo metastasis? Did they see metastasis when you were diagnosed? They saw um, in the... It was one lymph node, Rick. One lymph node. Okay, thanks. Okay. So, you know, it could be that she's making the call that there wasn't enough. And Hutch is weird because we've had other guys who are at Hutch and a lot of the doctors at Hutch don't like to give a second line anti-androgen starting with Dr. Yu and Dr. Schweitzer and we've had guys who have come in with a um, T3 maybe T4 and they've wanted to add a second line anti-androgen and their docs have said no and, and so they've gone just with the monotherapy LHRH. Now, in your case, Dr. Khan said she would give it to you based on the one lymph node that she saw. Um, and now she's saying, well, she gave it to you and it didn't really work for whatever reason. So she's now changed her mind. Maybe her colleagues got on her case and said, why are you giving this man a second line anti-androgen? Mm. Because you know, for, for your situation, which is, 
maybe T4. Some people may even consider you to be T3. It depends exactly where that lymph node was. It's not clear whether you should get a dub doublet therapy or just the singlet therapy. Doublet meaning Lupron plus a second line antiandrogen. So you're this saying that it may be there could be it could be a circumstance that it might be appropriate just to stay with a this uh, monotherapy. It might it, it it might be. This was the discussion we had earlier on with right. Tuke right at the beginning, and you know, should you add? Should there be a second line antiandrogen? Jo Dr. John, go ahead. Yeah, I was going to say basically the same thing. Stuart's your situation is very much like mine was four years ago. And when I was unable to tolerate abiraterone, it was discontinued and I switched to darolutamide instead. I was also a Gleason 9 with positive lymph nodes. So like if, you, if you compare you with me, you you would be, if you had my doctor, you'd be on darolutamide now instead of abiraterone. Well, the abiraterone is gone. Yeah. Right. Okay. Well, it sounds like I really need to have an eyeball to eyeball talk with her and ask her what's going on in her head and the rationale for making the choices that I'd like to at least participate in the selection of the treatment if if for no other reason than to just be informed. Yeah, just just say, don't I need something to replace the abiraterone? And I, and I think she said it's an insurance problem. She she said there are four drugs of that kind. Abby, you've already nixed, and the uh, other three are. It, it has not been determined that they've been sufficiently efficacious, and that oh, their I, utility is demonstrated. I think there's a misunderstanding there because enzalutamide would be covered by insurance, and is just as efficacious as darolutamide. Um, maybe that needs to be cleared up a little bit. So, you know, the, the, the thing, the problem is if she says it's an insurance problem, then your response is, well, how did we manage to get the insurance company to cover the abiraterone? Right. Because if they were saying it, it was available from one provider and I don't recall the name of the drug, but that it would cost, uh, $10,000 a month. And she said, I can't, I couldn't conscience you spending that. So that left two others within that second line. Well, group. yeah, but wait, wait, you know, yes, it costs, that's the sticker price, but you have insurance and you don't know what your insurance is going to charge you. And she doesn't know. So you, you're, you know, you, you, you've got, you've got plan D. So it's your decision as to whether you, if you had no insurance, she'd be right. But you have insurance. Now, maybe she looked at me and thought I didn't. She knew you had insurance because she's covering you because because you you you're you you know you got Medicare plus the supplement. Right. So you know it's I, I mean that's not the excuse. If she's making economic decisions for you, that's inappropriate. She has right. to say to you this this is what the sticker price is. Go check with your insurance and see how much it'll cost you and and go from there now we do know for sure that in 2025 it's not going to cost you more than two thousand dollars for the whole year right i can't wait <laughs> right but Thank if you. you want but she need if she wants to start it now she needs to check and you may you may be eligible to get onto the bayer program for darolutamide that some of these guys are on there's so a whole your first, your first drug of choice would be the enzalutamide darolutamide I'm sorry. Darolutamide would be a good choice. But it, okay. But you see, the thing is that 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 means that you, if you're metastatic hormone sensitive, and and what's going on here is how she's classifying you when she goes back to the insurance company, and if right. she classifies you as non-metastatic then it's going to be more difficult. And she may right. say, well, you know, you only had that one lymph node. So I've rethought this and maybe 
we've gotten rid of that now and maybe you are non-metastatic now. So, you know, then we'd have to go back and do another scan to see whether you really are or you're really not. But, but however she managed to get the abiraterone approved, she should be able to get one of the eyed brothers apalutamide, enzalutamide, or darolutamide. And if you're asking us which one we like the best, don't ask Mark Valens, please. But if you ask Len or <laughs> one of the other guys, they're all going to say darolutamide. That's what our experience has been. Well, that's important. Thank you. Okay, because the darolutamide doesn't Cross the brain barrier so it doesn't get to the androgen receptors in the brain and that makes you feel better but the lupron effect so to speak is still going to be there well the lupron effect is going to be there yes yeah okay. but then you have some of our guys who are on darolutamide monotherapy in other words they're just getting the darolutamide and they have testosterone in their body and they're not getting Lupron. And um, they're, man they're stable. Okay. But that might be above her pay grade because she's a young doc. Well, I just have to have that conversation with her. It's going to, you know, and I understand the, the, way the, the way the system is set up. It's not easy to switch to plan B. Or Dr. B? Not in the same institution, it isn't. Um, you can discuss it with them. I, I don't have a lot of experience. And again, as I, as I, as I, as I mentioned to somebody um, before, um, you know, Dr. Fong is now up at Hutch, and Dr. Fong would probably be if he's taking seeing patients, he'd be the guy that he would be my favorite doc there amongst all of them. Is, is it standard to have a um, med -onc and a, a uh, physician's assistant or some other um, lesser credentialed person uh, see you every other, like every three months I'll see him, then I'll be switched to the doctor back to him. Is that standard practice? It's it is it is frequent that they do that. Now, I I tell our guys you can insist that you will not see the nurse practitioner, you will not see the physician's assistant. At the same time, unless you have a decision to make, it doesn't really matter. So if you're going in and you're in the middle of a course and nothing's changed it's fine. And right. so you have to work a little bit with the system to give the docs a little more leeway. But if you are going in to make any type of decision, you do not want to see a nurse practitioner or a physician's assistant. Yeah. Okay. So if you know in your mind, because they may not know, but if you know in your mind, you've got a decision to make, you will have to insist on getting an appointment with the doc when they make the appointment. Right. Now, would I be, I, I'm not going to get a chance to see the doc unless I call for a special appointment until the next three month cycle, because at the end of no. this three month cycle, which comes in about two or three weeks, I'm scheduled with the, uh, with the, uh, I don't know what his credential is, but yeah. And then I would have to wait another potentially 30 days to see the doc. Right. So the answer is, you don't so in want a particular circumstance. Would you think it'd be from yes. a time perspective? Okay. Absolutely. You need to talk to the doctor this time and not the physician's assistant or the nurse practitioner. Okay. All right. Well, thank you. Well, th those are my questions. Thanks for covering it. Go ahead, Dr. Jeff. Could you tell us what the extent of your liver involvement problem was on the abiraterone? Uh, I believe it was the ALT and uh, one other one. 
and I think their values were way out of range, sometimes double the, double or triple the, the uh, normal range. And for how long did you take it? Well, uh, I don't have an exact date on that, but I know I was on it at least a month or two. Right. Well, I think she, I think the standard was it was testing after. I mean, it was a known irritant to the liver, so I think it must have been within a week or two of, uh, of taking it, which is uh, back so in the a, early. After it went up, did they re continue you? Or they immediately stopped the abiraterone? They immediately stopped and I tapered off the prednisone and then tried it at half speed or half strength. Mm -hmm. And that really was not that much better. It was a little better, but I was still out of range on both parameters. And then okay. we went, then she I said, well, how about one? Would it be better to get the benefit? And she said, well, I really haven't found that, but if you like, it's an interesting thing to try. We'll give it a try. So she gave it a try and it, it still was not happy. Got you. So when when you say with one, you mean one tablet. Oh, one tablet. Okay. Right. Um, I, took, I took four a day. Yeah. So she cut you down to two fifty. Um, look, it, it's a tricky situation. Could you manage just on the Lupron or the LHRH alone for you know if you did that? for 18 months to two years, probably, and a lot of guys might get treated that way. Would it be better if you had a second line antiandrogen? Yes, but you'd have more side effects. What about on a second line antiandrogen alone, monotherapy? Yeah, there's new research just came out that suggests that that might work for you. Um, not quite as good as being on both of them at the same time, but not much worse. Um, so you could try enzalutamide monotherapy, um, but a lot of it depends on how she stages you. Mm. And you're, you're in a very gray area for staging. Well, yeah, I'm a, I'm a grade nine. And uh... that's, that's the Gleason. That's not, that's not the grading. We're talking about... We're talking about tumor grading, yeah. Right. You you didn't have seminal sem, seminal vesicle invasion, right? No, I did. I did. Oh, you did have SVI. Okay. Definitely. You so all right. So, um, so then you you would probably be a T three C, um, and or maybe a T four. And how would that influence things? Um, well, if you were if you're a T3C, um, it's it's like we said with Took right at the beginning. It, it it has to be treated pretty seriously. And if and if it were me, I would definitely want a second line antiandrogen. And I'd want it for like, I want to be on it for at least eighteen months. The two together. Um, if you're a T4, barely a T4, it's clear you can get the second line antiandrogen. If you're a T3C, it's going to be a fight with the insurance to get you the second line antiandrogen. And the guidelines don't necessarily say that you have to have it. It's more mm. of a doctor's call. So I just need to move that appointment up. I need to get to her and uh, have the conversation. Um, you do, and you have to make it clear to her that you want to be on a second line antiandrogen because you're very concerned about your seminal vesicle invasion, and you want and you need her to to fight for that for you. And I think that's probably where the problem lies. That that one random lymph node may not be enough to, in her mind, or in the mind of some of the other docs at Hutch, because they don't, they don't treat as a matter of course with that. But there are other docs that would treat as a matter of course. Dr. Staffew, I'm certain would put you on. Yeah. 
a second line anti-androgen and other docs too i am kind of embarrassed i didn't remember this but i think there's one more than one met met in the uh in the um hip okay so if, if, or rather if, the nodes the, uh, Okay, again, it's a, you know, it's a bit of a moving target here because I don't have your notes here, Stuart, and I have notes, but I don't have any notes of your metastasis. So we need to know where the metastasis was at the time of diagnosis. They call it a, a regional, a regional uh, metastasis. Where were they? Where, where exactly? You, do you have a PSMA scan there? I do. Uh, I'm looking at my notes. It says regional metastasis into the nodes. Locally, calling it locally advanced. Okay, so it's locally advanced, and there's no evidence of any any metastasis in the bone. No bone or soft tissue metastasis. Okay. So again, this is the problem. You're locally advanced with SVI. It is a discretionary call whether they're going to give you the second line anti-androgen she got it approved i feel like i'm sort of repeating myself here but they got they did get it approved for the abiraterone and now she's saying well we don't know if we could get it approved for the enzalutamide well however they got it for the for for, for the abiraterone that's how they're going to get it for the enzalutamide okay but if, you know, if, if you would have been turned down for the abiraterone, I would have said, yeah, okay, I get it. Your insurance isn't going to do it. Yeah. Well, we've but got a pretty good plan. Okay, but she's fobbing you off with this $10,000 bullshit. Right. All right. Well, that's good to know. I didn't know it operated that way. What what operated that way? Well, that you have to make the, you have to make the economic case and you have to decide that you want this to happen. And then... You know, enter the data in a way that the insurance bean counter is going to say, "Well, okay, this this makes sense." Okay, you don't have to make the economic case. The economic case is completely separate. It's totally separate from the clinical. Okay. It's the 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 clinical is her decision and your decision as whether you want to go on the drug. Once that decision has been taken, then we look at the economics to see how we can get you that drug. But for her to rule out a drug on the basis of economics is wrong. It's not, that's not her job. Right. The clear assumption was I was coming out of pocket with 10, 10 grand a month. And she figured I couldn't, many people couldn't do that. And she, you know, is right. Well, then you've got to ask her, why did you make that assumption? Right. Okay, I know you've got other folks waiting, so I don't want to take. No, up. we don't. We're we're done. Russ has gone. Everybody else is done. So we're we closing them out. We talked them out. We're 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 closing up shop, and all my moderators have gone. So if anybody wants anything from me, now's the time to ask, because I'm here and I'll stay on. But Stuart, are you good? Anybody else want to say anything to Stuart? Thomas. Uh, well, yeah, I punched the button at the wrong time. I had a question not related to Stuart. Okay. Um, so Stuart, you're, you can step down and I'll take any other questions that anyone has right now. Thomas. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Rick, could you please spell out the name of your recommended doctor at Fred Hutch? Fred Hutch. Well, I will, but I don't know if he's taking patients. That's his okay. Name, his name is Lawrence uh, Fong, F O N G. F O N G. Okay. Yeah, Lawrence with a W, L A W R E N C E. Lawrence Fong. He is the guy who was the principal investigator on Provenge. And he has gone up there to open up their Parker Immunotherapy Immuno Oncology Group, which he was co-running at UCSF. And have you heard anything else about the uh, the doc you expect to be coming to OHSU? Uh, no. Uh, so I just don't know. Just don't know. Uh, 
Good enough answer. Thank you very much, Rick. All right. Jeff Marchi. Yeah, Rick, um, talking with the CFC group uh, last week, they were talking about the problems with uh, taking taking uh, lutamides or abiraterone for more than uh, four years and nor endocrine. But he all, the, Dr. Weber also mentioned that the same problem with, exists with Lupron. And that now that I've been on Lupron for seven years, and the question is, if you're on like Lupron for two years and then you switch to darolutamide for two years, are you at the four year point? I've been on, you know, Lupron for seven years and uh, between Abby and uh, darolutamide, another three and a half, is this a cumulative chance of getting near well, endocrine? I think the issue that we see, and this is, again, this is our gut, it's anecdotal, is you've got to keep the cancer off um, you've got to keep the cancer um, you've got to surprise the cancer <laughs> got to always be in a, so if you drop the lupron it's a change and the, and the cancer has to respond to that if you are if you stay on the lupron and whatever drug you're on for a long period of time like Abby that's not good. But if you switch the Lupron from the Abbey to the Lubecca, that's okay. Could you go on monotherapy right now? You may be able to. It's a discussion to have with Dr. Andrea. Yeah, I'm going to meet her. With, I'm going to talk with her next week. So I'm going to bring this up. I want to. I want to try it for sure. It's. Uh, Tell her. You know, uh, you've been on it a long time. Could could we try monotherapy darolutamide and? You know, we've got good experience in our group of two or three guys who are Len and, 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 and uh, um, David Muslin and somebody else, too, who's been on monotherapy darolutamide and done quite well. Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask her about doing that right away. It's uh, stop the Orgovix. Because uh, Orgovix is no different from Lupron as far as it's the neuroendocrine is concerned, it it's causes the exact same effect. Yeah, who was the group you said you were, you heard it in? CSC, that the CSC group that meets uh, twice a twice a month on Thursdays. They have a Dr. Weber that. Uh, per, oh, per the, yeah, from the northwest up there. You know, would I agree that being on long-term Lupron? Yes. I mean, when I was originally diagnosed, they would say that, yeah, eventually the cancer adjusts to the long-term Lupron. But it, but, but if it's the same drug for the same period of time, then it doesn't know that then, um, we don't have a workaround, but if we keep changing the, second line antiandrogen that keeps the that keeps the the cancer off center well i'm, so, I'm going to push to just go just go down and that's all I'm just a single it. drug try yeah. it yeah i can't keep, hurt to try it for a month keep, try it well you need probably need more than a month well i get a blood test every month and when i went from four loop four uh as i take pills to three I was I went up one from 0.2 to one in 18 days. So my PSA okay, so is maybe you're not move working quickly. Okay, Took you have another you have another question. Uh, uh, yes, Rick. I was just wondering, do you have any uh, information on uh, Dr. Helen hey, Moon this? out of Riverside and Palm Springs? She's the only uh, EU medical oncologist I was able kind of to mm -hmm. look up on in Kaiser. Because uh, right now, I, I feel like I don't really have a quarterback on my team yet. Uh, you know, some, um, you know the, uh, my urologist and radiation oncologist is getting kind of tired of me e emailing them questions all the time. Okay, so huh? it, it, it's, a little, it's a little bit complicated in that the Kaiser, um, let, let me just mute Jeff Marchi. Um, at Kaiser, they don't like to give you a medical oncologist until you are have clear metastasis. 
I don't agree yeah, with that. And I fought to get a doctor. And they gave me a doctor who I was never that impressed with, to be honest. Um, and really, they should be involved in your care because of all the side effects of the hormone therapy, but it's hard to get. I don't know that doctor uh, that you mentioned who's in the Kaiser system. Uh, I, I'd be looking at her, where she trained, who she trained with, how, why she calls herself a GU medical oncologist. Um, we've had, at the beginning, we were getting some of our Southern California people in to see Dr. Hartstar, but now they've put a stop to that. Which, which office is he out of, Dr. Hartstar? It's a she. In, she's out of Geary, San Francisco. San Francisco. Geary. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah she's I thought Kaiser, Southern California had... Kaiser are different plans. So that's why out of my, that's not an option for, for, for me. Because I was with I Northern North California and had a different membership number from Southern California. So it's two different medical systems. Hold, hold on a second. Okay. I'm not clear. Are you in the Southern California system or the Northern California system? Uh, yeah, now I'm in Southern California. Previously okay. before, when I was up in Folsom, Sacramento area, I, I used Roseville. So, okay. so I'm kind but, of familiar with both Kaiser plans, but yeah, right. right now I'm just Southern California. Right. So if you're in Southern California, that's just what I said. You, it's very difficult to get an appointment with Dr. Hartstock. We used to be able to do it. We can't do it anymore. I don't know of a Janito urinary medical oncologist in the Southern California system that I can recommend. Um, I don't know, Dr. Moon, if you if you want to send, you know, if you want to send me, I, I can look, but I just don't, I just don't know. There, okay. there are okay. very I few. Okay. Yeah. I had that before yeah. I had metastasis. She, I, right after uh, the radiation failed, I had heart start when I have, went on abiraterone the first time. I didn't get metastasis for a couple right, of years right, after. Right, right, right. But so Jeff, they're, not, they're not that sticky. Yeah, please don't muddy the waters. Okay, please don't muddy the waters. Well, maybe they, there's a GU down the, down there that he can go to, and they, if, even if he doesn't have metastasis, they might they might be eligible. That's what I'm getting at. Yeah, but he's just said to me, do I know Dr. Moon, who's a GU medical oncologist down here? You stepped out the room. All right, now, I don't know Dr. Moon, and I'm not sure if you can get the if you can get the the a referral, but you could try it. I, I, I don't know what to say. They may not. They may give you a referral. They may not. I had to advocate for myself to get a referral. Okay. Yeah, it seems like I'm like taking the role of the quarterback, and like all these other doctors are like the running back and the receivers. You know. Yeah. So. Yeah. So, uh, for the time being. Yeah, but that that that's that's the problem with Kaiser. That's the problem with Kaiser. So my recommendation, when you renew, get out of Kaiser. You got renewal coming up at the end of the year, right? Uh, you know, I'm on like uh, I'm 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 on Ob Ob Obamacare, so. Um, I might not qualify for Obamacare next year, so I might go to Medi-Cal, and that might my, my option might be even more limited. So that's why I'm trying to I'm trying to crank out as much medical treatment as I can for okay. this year. I would say that probably under Medi-Cal, you're going to have more choices, and stay away from Kaiser. Oh, I see. If you go to Medi-Cal, you'll probably be in a better situation with more choices. Stay away from Kaiser. Kaiser's great unless you get sick. I mean, yeah, I think for most, 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 uh, you know, most common problems, Kaiser is fine. But uh, yeah, that's but, exactly yeah, right. 
uh, for more general uh, illnesses, Kaiser is is great, especially with their online medical records and stuff. So, so I can't complain with that regard. But okay. yeah, thank you. Okay, uh, Charlie. Uh, thank you. I just want to let you know I put my email address there in the chat, and if you have any ideas on a GU oncologist, Davis, or I'll even go to the Bay Area if necessary. Okay. Bay Area, we definitely have ideas, and I can definitely, I've definitely got people, but let me see if I can save you the the trip, and um, I'm just, I just want to make, just in case it doesn't save, I'm just uh, retiredmiddlemanlist.com, Charlie, okay, so, um, but let me see, the problem is I, we don't have great experience with the, with the GU Medonks at, at Davis, but I will look for you, if not, I can definitely, I've got people we can send you to at, um, who know us well, at, um, at UCSF. So. Thank you, Rick. All right, guys. I'll be talking to myself. Oh, Dennis Carden. Come on, come, show your face and come on back on for a second if you're still there. Is Dennis Carden still there? Okay. Well, he might have walked, he might have walked away. You might have walked away. Uh, unmute yourself, Stuart. Just wanted to say, can you hear me? I can yep. hear you. Thank you. <laughs> it's a pleasure. Sorry I've been a little brusque, but this was not an easy session today. <laughs> you, you are who you are, and it's uh, beautiful. So thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you for the forgiveness. All right, guys. There's only six of us. This is amazing. We've shrunk down. We shrunk down to six. One of whom isn't even with us, Mr. Carden. Okay, good. Oh, and Jim, we never asked these new guys if they were uh, vets. I'm so oh, sorry. Oh yes, I did. Oh yes, I did under the covers, and I oh, did good. not find one. So heck. Did you find one? No, I oh. did not. None were. So that's okay. 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 Um, and I had a long chat with. Uh, I'll I'll maybe give you a call tomorrow. I had a long chat with Mike Crosby uh, yesterday. So. Oh, good. Anyway, um, I s sent him some uh, 